everyone. I'd like to close. Oh, Mike, are you there? Okay. Good evening, everyone. First, we'd like to take a motion to close executive session. Trustee Rosillo, all in favor. Second, Trustee Collio, all in favor. And that passes. And now I'd like to open the meeting for Board of Trustees, regular meeting for August 11th, 2015. Do I have a motion? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Rosillo, all in favor. Meeting comes to order. Okay, first, <laughs> that's the only part of it. First, we're going to have a Pledge of Allegiance, and then I have a small prayer, a short prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I suggest a prayer and an activity for our new beautiful waterfront. Rest is not idleness, and to lie sometimes on the grass under trees on a summer's day, listening to the murmur of the water or watching the clouds float across the sky is by no means a waste of time. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay, we need to... First, start with the courtesy of the floor. If anyone is here and would like to speak. Uh, Deputy Mayor, do you yes. want to uh, take a motion to amend the agenda first to add an item? OK. Before you get the courtesy of the floor. So do I have a motion to um, amend the agenda for item pre-1, uh, which is a consideration uh, to approve a serial bond resolution? Do I have that? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Golio, discussion? All in favor? And the agenda is approved to be pre-1, then followed by 1. And back to you. OK. I'm mm -hmm. Peggy Blizzard, 12 Chestnut Street. Um, I'm concerned about the gate being locked over to Nuns Beach. Where does that stand now? I'm going to let our village attorney answer that. Because I provide an update. We have um, actually issued a violation uh, to the landing. They were in court, uh, I think it was last, this past Thursday. Uh, they have counsel there. We've been speaking to them, and uh, I hope to resolve it relatively soon. So I can't go over there tomorrow? Uh, as of now, I think the gate's still closed. I'm hoping to get it open as soon as Will possible. Will you let, the, let us know as soon sure, as that as is? Soon, as soon okay. as you know, we'll, we'll, we'll provide it. I have uh, a project, a photo project I want to do over there. Yeah. So Okay, thank you. We believe you should have access to that. Yeah, yeah well, uh, Vicki's going to speak about it, too. But before I leave, I just want to say one more thing. For number 18, the mm -hmm. item 18, 75 Main Street. I think it's wonderful that somebody's going to uh, develop it, but is there any way that we can find some sort of assurance from all of these developers that they have the money to finish the project? Now, as you know, we've had some problems with that so far. Uh, 19 Livingston, we had a beautiful old antique building, Dr. Uh, Pooley's house, it's gone now. And that's because the original builder ran out of money, right? Um, the other thing is down at the bank, to Ashford Avenue. That's three years that's been running. And you see somebody working there maybe once a month. I assume they've run out of money. Um, the um, the uh, Rivertown Square, I hear they have not paid their taxes because they've, they're, they have. They have good. Well, thank God for that. But... Uh, I would hate to see 75 Main started, and you know that must that project's going to about 10 to 20 million dollars at least. That's going to be a very very expensive project, and if they start and can't finish it, and you got a mess inside, what's going to happen? Oh my God, we have to tear down the building because it's going to fall, and we don't want to see that happen. Now, is it legal? Is there some way you can make uh, get some assurance? What that, I can, we, we will take note of that. I don't think we're prepared to answer that. But you know what I'm thinking? Here. You hear what yeah. I'm no, saying? No, I, absolutely. Don't let people start a project unless they've got money to but finish it. But there are certainly legal concerns, but it, okay. it, it is duly noted. Okay, but Nuns Beach, I want to go over there this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm counting on you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else here to speak? Vicki?
Just so you know, Vicki, the sun is shining brightly right now. <laughs> That's because I'm wearing my raincoat, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> and as long as I have my raincoat on, it's not going to rain. It was pouring five minutes ago. I know. Crazy, I was right? at my neighbor's contemplating, thinking of how wonderful it is to live in Dobbs Ferry. And here I am. Anyhow, I'm here on two different occasions. My name is Vicki Jones. I live at 55 Grandview Avenue. Um, um, I will speak to uh, my, friend Sh uh, my friend Peggy's concern that I was quite surprised that the Landing um, Homeowners Association feels that they can come and put that up before, you know, lock the gate. Are they being charged any kind of fee for doing this that they don't just completely now? I mean, if they were in court on Thursday, today is Tuesday, it should be off. So, I mean, if they're not being charged for violating the agreement, what, what makes them in any kind of hurry to um, comply with the resolution that was passed when I was a trustee? We're speaking with their lawyers and we're hoping that they see it our way. If they don't, there's a number of options we have. We have our violation in local court. There may be an action brought in Supreme Court to uh, quiet title and, and force them to open the gate. So, you know, the board I know is considering all options. We're hoping to negotiate before that, which we're doing now. Okay. So hopefully we know something soon and they open the gate. We think they need to and have to. And I mean, this was something, you know, that we were very adamant about when we mm -hmm. passed that resolution. And... Uh, they, the, the original property owners know this, and from what I've heard through different people, you know, they always reach out to, to people that were active in the community, even though you're not active so much anymore. They contacted me and said, what happened? And I told them, and it's, you know, it's quite disturbing that if they think that they're concerned about people going on that property and lighting fires or for whatever reason that they feel that it needs to be secured, that the... Uh, they don't contact the police or have the, do the Mercy College students if they think it's students lighting these fires or somebody to enforce it because, you know, it's just not right. And um, there has to be some, something on our end to make this happen soon. Okay. We're on it. Yep. Okay. Um, we Okay, I'm glad to hear that. We agree. Yeah. Isn't that nice? <laughs> All right, I'll see you down there with the Clippers tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> unfriendly? I mean, uh, Peggy. I'm, I forgot to mention that the mayor is not here tonight. Clearly, the substitute teacher is here. The microphones are flying. Go ahead, Vic. Yeah. We're wearing raincoats and it's sunny. <coughs> That's when, when I go outside, it'll start raining again. Um, actually, to tell you the truth, the reason I came here today was two things. Um, quite a while ago, I pointed out to the village that, you know, this wonderful six or seven million dollar investment that you so lovely put in our prayer tonight. Um, and you built a lovely kayak facility where nobody from outside our community can use unless they pay $100 for a recreation fee. Um, it's very difficult to drop off your kayak and go leave your boat there and go. Um, the most difficult thing is that I had written to the board, or at least to the mayor, hoping that he would share my email with the board and to the police chief saying that there's no place to unload the boats. Anybody that's going there, there's you know all of that recreation um, area that they've now taken in the lower part of the train station where commuters used to go and park in the morning have now um, been four hour parking for the entire day, which I think is, is not friendly to commuters. I can understand the need for our um, partner at the waterfront to be able to have places for his patrons to park. But I, as a commuter, have to drive that much further in the morning. It's no big deal, but it's almost at the point I could walk from my house to get to the train station. Um, but the whole point of, of the point that I'm really making about all of those recreation parkings for four hours, there's no loading or unloading place for boats. And it, I dare anybody to take a car with the kayak on top to try and maneuver a boat off the top of their car 
in that traffic and in that three foot space between car A and car B. And at that time I suggested it would be so easy, even if they did it certain hours of the day, to take three spaces, restripe, restripe it, and say kayak loading and zone loading. Do it from five o'clock at night and on weekends, kayak loading only. But I mean, the, all this money that was spent to redo the park and make it kayak friendly, we got no place to unload our boats. That's not the only problem. Oh, believe me, I could give you a list. Yeah, there true. are. <laughs> and we know it, yeah. and we're working on it. And you know, the park did open up and some parts of it are not usable yet, like the boat dock. And people are complaining. The other choice would have been to wait till everything was done. So, but the, it's there's open. no reason the kayakers waited. Okay, I'll I wait. know. So we are trying to now go back and mitigate some of the issues. Some of the issues are coming up because the new park is there. Some of the issues are coming up. You know, my son said to me, they just, oh my God, he said, everybody has a different opinion about the parking at the waterfront. I said, welcome to my world. I said, but it's a train station, and now it's a restaurant, and it's a waterfront, and it's recreation. A lot of moving parts. And we are working, right Betsy? On trying to make it better, but it's going to take some time. So can you Well, go? as a kayaker, for two years, you, maybe even three years, I was denied access to launch my boat in Dobbs Ferry. And now I can go launch my boat, but I'm going to have to drag it across the parking lot. No, we got, we, it's duly noted. Okay. After I, I spoke with you, we actually did shift those recreation spots directly down in front of the beach. So there are eight recreation spots that have been shifted directly in front of the beach to make it easy to, to access. And I was actually down there last night and saw people taking their kayaks off and launching from those very spots. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when I've been there, there's really right. not enough room. If there's we, cars... The, 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 the idea is if you were to go to any municipal, like Cold Spring, for example, they have a dedicated unloading and unloading zone. So you just unload the boat, and, and there's, there's, there's space to step to the side so you can take your boat off the car and down here. If the boat's on top of the car, you don't necessarily walk the boat out into the traffic. That's just what I'm saying. But whatever, cause, because I, my friends can't come here and kayak. Uh, we go to Terrytown because I can't bring my friends here to kayak because they can't park in the train station. It's pitiful. But on top of that, I've been driving to my train station to be a commuter for probably now about 15 years. And you know, I maintain probably about the same speed all the time, which is close to fast and sometimes faster. The other day, my husband came down, the train station was dropping me off. Um, we came down the hill and I said, honey, slow down. You're going 20 miles an hour. The sign says 10. He didn't even have a chance to slow down. The police pulled him over and gave him a ticket for going 20 miles an hour. And I said, my God, how long has it been 10 miles an hour? I know Joe, Victor. For a while now. <laughs> right, but I know you commute there. Yep. Vinny? I, I commute there. Okay. There is a woman now that takes the 804 with me that saw my husband getting the ticket, who now, when she gets to the bottom of the hill, she puts her flashers on and she will not go over 10 miles an hour because she doesn't want to get a ticket and get pulled over. And cars are honking and they're beeping. And I just don't understand, why is it 10 miles an hour when it's 15 miles an hour in a school zone? 10 miles an hour seems ridiculous for that parking lot. And I know the rule's been there since 1988, and it's never been enforced. Well, and again, moving parts. It's a brand new park. We have people walking across to get coffee. We have people walking out into traffic. It, we've it's had much several busier near than misses, it was. And we've but. been asked to monitor the speed down there because it's not being done. And you know what? There are people speeding down there. And I can tell you that the speed trailer's been down there for three weeks. It's taken a survey. It's indicated that people are speeding down there. Um, and there have, been, there have been two summonses issued in a month that the speed trailer's been down there. So there, there were warnings being given, being given you know, for the first 10 days that the speed trailer was down there. And 
So yeah. it will be monitored until until the village board decides that they want to increase the speed limit. As long as I receive complaints that cars are speeding down there, we will be monitoring the speed. Well, I'll also say this. We're I'll be happy to share a, a traffic study that I found because accordingly to the Department of Transportation, there's like an 85 or 65 percentile of if X amount of people are going X amount, then the, tr the, then the speed limit should be reasonable. And 10 miles an hour in the train station is not reasonable. I mean, I, I haven't run over a person yet going to get coffee in the morning. And I haven't That's seen good. anybody hurt or any car accidents as a result. So again, it's like the needs of trying to adopt this waterfront are really be, are detrimental as far as I'm concerned as a commuter getting to work in the morning. I, I can take a few more minutes, but I'm, I don't well, like no, people yeah. honking at me when I'm trying to get to the work. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, Mavis? I'm Mavis Kane, South Lawn Avenue. A couple of things uh, bothered me tonight. Um, Darius, when you said we hope the landing will see it our way, is, it, is our way not the legal way that they must open the, the beach to it? The terminology just, I'm, I've been in the ad business 40 years. Words hang, hang in my head. My, my, my statement on that is that we see it a certain way, the village, which we believe is the right way. Right. Uh, but the landing our, obviously doesn't see it that way because they've locked the gate. We're hoping to convince them otherwise. But ours is the legal way. For according well, to the contract we have with Capelli, I happen to have I, moved back I, from I, I Europe believe, at that I time. I believe they need to make it, have it be open. Okay. Uh, You're comforting but, me. But uh, ultimately, I got to convince the landing first. If the landing won't agree, the board has to consider options yeah. that they have to force them to agree. Yes, but we have the contract. When there's, there's file, there's mm -hmm. filed easements, Capelli. there's offering plans yeah. submitted to the attorney general right. that all have this information in there, which we think is pretty solid. Right. It it does affect walkers on the trail who you know yeah. like to scoot down that that bank that is really made for mountain goats more than people. But never mind, you know it's nice to have that access. And a new member of the community was the one who brought it to my attention, and I think I spread the word to my colleagues here. Um, one more thing. Uh, my good friends in Hastings, our neighbors, feel very affronted that the waterfront is for residents only. And I remember this, how, explain that to me so I can explain to my good neighbors in Hastings. It's not for residents only. Well, there, are, there are parking restrictions. Yeah. And so that's what makes it seem as though it's not open to anybody. But anybody could walk in and anybody could sit there. What we're trying to do right now is but they can't park. Is yeah, you can get a permit. You, you can get a permit, get a permit for the day. You come up Daily to the police permit. station and you buy right. a permit for we, four We are yeah. working on making that easier for people. We are working yeah. on making all of the, the, the challenges that the parking is right now, I'm making it user friendly. Yeah, I know. But it, the park it, is. It open. would be lovely to share it, you know, without them having to run to the police station and get a We understand. Work. Mm -hmm. ticket. You yeah, know, they're not alone. This came up years ago and someone, I've forgotten who in the audience, got up and said, how would we feel if we got to Central Park and we weren't allowed in because we didn't live in the neighborhood? You know, it, these things should be enjoyed by everyone. And, and, that, and the, that's just exactly what I told my son the other night. It's not just the waterfront. There's also a train station there. There are parking oh, restrictions. Yes. So, oh, well, sure. And then now there's a, a restaurant there. So in order to make room for everybody, we're trying to mm -hmm. make it so that people can come, make yeah. it easier for them to come. But we have to iron out the we have to wait and see how this is going this first year. We're just right. collecting yeah. the problems right now. And they will be addressed one by one. By the way, my grandchildren were distraught to see that the boat that they used to play on at oh. the little playground is no longer a boat. My 12-year-old said, why did they have to change it? Why did they change it? The boat was beautiful. <laughs> I can't answer that. It doesn't look anywhere near as interesting the way it is now. We, we, uh, I brought these three little kids from 12 down to four years old to enjoy the boat, and the boat was there no more. Anyway. Let's hope that it will be just as user-friendly for the kids. But those, those things are important, that, that we share our wonderful waterfront and that we get the landing to see the law on our side, the law the way that 
is correctly legal. So not just that they want, we want them to agree with us. They have to agree with us. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Anyone else? Patty Steinschneider, co-chair of the FESTA committee, uh, reminding everyone that September 26th is the FESTA, mm -hmm. and you should get your stuff in soon. Uh, there are some additional issues this year that we have to make sure we're handling right. So particularly anybody who has a restaurant or anything like that should make sure that they're signed up early enough that we can make sure that we're accommodating all of their needs. Anybody has any questions, give me a call. Thanks. It's okay. This is courtesy of the floor. Do you want to speak about yes, that? Yes. Oh, sure. Catch your breath. Relax. Traffic in the rain. And the heat. And the heat. Um, Just state right. your name, please, for us. Yes. Okay. Diane McKenna, 36 Washambo Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening. Um, my, I'm here because of the dog park issue. Okay. Can you just turn the mic? Sure. So, yeah, there you go. Sure. Um, it's been an issue for over, over two years now. And uh, Mr. Serrano, the, pre the previous village administrator, he was trying to proceed with the park. And now um, Ms. Gilardi, congrats, by the way, um, who has also brought the issue to the table, but to no avail. Um, the park doesn't have to be at the waterfront. There's plenty of property in Dobbs Ferry. Um, I was going to send a formal request to the mayor and the Board of Trustees, but I'm, I'm, I'm here, so it doesn't make a difference to do that. Uh, some of us don't have children, myself included, uh, so our, our animals are our, our babies, okay. Um, we just wanted a place that they can um, run around without leashes and just do whatever, they, do whatever dogs do. Uh, the park would be very low maintenance, and I apologize because I'm late by not bringing my version of the architectural plan. And that's all we're asking for. For two years now, we haven't gotten an answer. Um, nobody's responded, and I don't know why. Can I, can I just say a couple of things? I, sure. I have a dog, and I, I have kids, and sometimes I like the dog better. Yeah. But, <laughs> and I love dog parks. Yes. So two years ago when this came, I had asked that person if they could sort of form a committee and sort of kind of take charge of this and bring to us some of their thoughts, where they think they should go, how is it going to be maintained, sort of do the, you know, the grassroots part yes. of it. Never heard from them again. So I offer that to you. If you feel that you have other people that you can work with that are on, you know, want to do the same thing, mm -hmm. it would be really helpful for me and maybe for the other board mm -hmm. members to know when there, you say there are plenty of places, where are the places, what, you know, we, we, I think we like dogs, right? I've, Some of had, us do, I've worked yeah. with service dogs for 12 years. And dog parks, I mean, I've gone to the one in Greenberg, Greenberg. many times. Yes. But they do get messy. They do need maintenance. And they're so... Well, this would be sand. It wouldn't be grass. But still... Not everybody is as conscientious well, as some of us. They have to be responsible for They have to be responsible. So just some of just vet some of those issues for us, and, and bring a couple of people to us and say, you know, this is give us some ideas to work with. I it, have about 80 signatures, so I don't know if you want 80 people standing here. No, then just you know, you know. I don't need 80 people, <laughs> but just some break it down a little bit for us. And really, I, anything could happen in this village if people really want it to happen and they go for it. So okay. I wouldn't lose faith. No, I'm, I'm going to keep pursuing until something happens because they're leaving it up to me. Good. Uh, the other thing is the waterfront park. I don't know if there's anybody here that's on the board, the contractors or designers that are in charge of, okay. Um, well, there's been complaints to me for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe because I, I'm the only one that will stand up here. Um, whoever was involved in designing the park, I have to have an explanation of why there's no urinal in the men's room. If you've been down there, you know that there's no urinal in the men's room. We have somebody that might have an answer to that. New York State Code. Yep. Put a urinal in the men's room, you got to add another toilet in the uh, women's bathroom. Yep. It's called the potty parity law. <laughs> oh, no, I believe, thank you. I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> I, I just learned something, too. You need to repeat really? what he said. Mike just said he couldn't Oh, hear. okay. I'm going to try to repeat what you just said, yeah. unless you could come up here and say it again so nicely for us. The mic, uh, the Okay, if you add the urinal in the men's room, you got to add another toilet. 
Yeah. If you add, <laughs> no, 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 mic. they're not hearing you. So either I have to repeat everything, or if you can come up here, that would be helpful. Can you come, come up to the up. mic, please? Because I don't, I don't think you are alone in this question. Yes, we have got that. Yeah. yeah. So. Under state code, uh, state construction code, if you add a urinal, you got to add a toilet in the women's room. Because that's the considered problem. two and two. Yeah. Right, and mm -hmm. well, one and one. We're one and one. Yeah. Any device you add, you have to add it in the other bathroom as well, or you're not being fair. And that is called potty parity law. Thank you. It's in the state code. Thank you very much. Okay. So the other concern we're, is we're getting a lot done with you tonight, aren't we? <laughs> now I can tell people when they go down there. That's the law. Okay. That's what um, the only question, the only problem that I see with that is, um, like my husband was saying, you're gonna not 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 all the users are gonna lift the toilet. Okay. Okay. Which means we're gonna have a problem, and we're gonna have what are they saying? Oh, creating unsanitary environment and unpleasant odors coming out in the summer. <laughs> you know. Correct. Yeah, well, yeah, correct. You know, but that's there not going to happen. There you go. We gave you two great responses. <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. You're, you're good to go now. <laughs> I'm good to go. Could you just repeat your name for us? Yes, Diane McKenna. McKenna. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. And what you need? <laughs> well, thank you for that. That answering that. But um, at the dog park, you need me to do um, just looking around for places. I, 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 how do you want to handle this, Betsy? What would be the best? If this woman could sort of poncho this so so called committee kind of I just don't know what land is available, um, um, what the rights are on it. I know they were thinking about something uh, where AXA was Over or Chauncey right. Park. I don't know if that's gonna be available for, right. for quite some time. Right. Um, but we could certainly take a look at what is available to us. Okay. So, so I call think me. you have my email. Yep. Call okay. me. We'll discuss it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank have a good you. night everybody. Sorry, like, no problem. Is that it? Okay. Uh, not, uh, not, not oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just curious. Maybe I just missed something. Was there, was there a prior discussion about, at a different meeting about uh, item 19 that I just missed? No, but you didn't miss anything. Um, so is there any, so do I understand that the board is, has approved the site? No, 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 no. no. We're what's referring happening? it to the planning board. It's just part of the process. We've not approving Let's anything. Start. It's just starting. And it will start at the next planning board meeting, yes, probably. Thank you. Quickly, please. I'm getting yelled at that I'm letting everyone talk more than three minutes. The mayor's going to fire me. This is brief. Um, a few years back, the high school and the recreation department had an agreement that residents of Dobbs Ferry could use the high school weight room, which was wonderful. But they announced it toward the end of the season and not enough people were aware of it and didn't, enough didn't sign up. Is there any way I can revive that? I mean, uh, get a I'm petition gonna, or something? I'm gonna give this one to Jeff since he is a former board school board member. Yeah. My suggestion would be speak with uh, the superintendent, Lisa Brady, uh, and you know, okay. ra raise the issues. Uh, I know that there were continual problems finding somebody to supervise it. I, I know the kids had to, they had to have a teenager there, and th there weren't a number of us, but I just thought it wasn't publicized. And now it's going to be hellish parking at the New York Sports Club. It was so wonderful. The kids kept it so clean. Yeah, and so. We can't do anything for you, no, unfortunately. No, but I'll go do that. School. I'll Gotta do go what he's, board. yeah, I just thought maybe, I should do it early in the season instead of waiting. Would you say yes to that? Yes, the sooner the better. Okay. okay, anyone else? So we have a presentation tonight for the holiday hustle update. That's you, Lisa. <laughs> Come holiday hustle up to the microphone. Well, I don't know if I could uh, follow up Diane's presentation about the urinal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't My name is can I just tell you something? How many times have people asked us this? We did get emails. We did get emails, yes. believe it or not. Yeah. I've gotten I've been I, think I think that was the highlight of my night. <laughs> I'm just so glad you had a, an answer because yes. I've been dodging that thinking, oh my God. Yeah. I always have an answer. Not you. No, the gentleman behind you, Vicki. 
<laughs> I know you always have an answer. You do always have an answer. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's Go ahead, true. Lisa. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lisa Bai. I am the chairperson of the Dobbs Ferry Youth Coalition, and I'm here to ask the board for their approval to hold the third annual holiday hustle on December 13th. Um, in Dobbs Ferry once again, following the same path and the same uh, trail as we have for the Labor Day 5K. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is our third, um, our third time holding, uh, hosting the Holiday Hustle. We started off with the first year having a little under 100 runners uh, register for the event. Last year we had over 325 runners. We had a great turnout. We had 70 children, um, more importantly, 70 children from the, uh, from the community's Boy Scout and Girl Scout organizations. We had a tremendous buy-in and uh, sponsorship from local vendors and companies in Dobbs Ferry and, and around the community. I already have um, just as much in dollars as I, uh, I uh, raised last year from the sponsors. I have new sponsors and I hit the $4,000 mark already uh, wow. on intention. Um, and we have a couple of new events that we'd like to incorporate. Um, some vendors have asked us to, uh, to have the opportunity to, we did a little bit of this last year where the uh, runners bring in their, their bibs and they go to the neighborhood um, restaurants and they get a discount off their bill and it keeps, it keeps the business in Dobbs Ferry and it, it extended the whole day of that community feeling in Dobbs Ferry. And, and of course it is a, uh, the basis for this is to garner money so that we could fund, so that we could purchase meaningful holiday gifts for children of struggling families in the community. And that's really the most important part of the whole event. And when is it this year? December 13th. <clears throat> okay. And just, you know, when I was saying to that woman about the dog park and things, this is exactly what I'm talking about. There was no holiday hustle four years ago. No. And look what's happened. Yes. This is, it's great. It's great. So thank you. things do happen. And thank you. Um, I don't think we have to vote on Do we have to vote on this? I don't think so. Do we? I don't think so. No, I don't think. No. But it will require village participation as far as street closings and things of that nature. Maybe as, as we get closer to it, but yeah, not for tonight. We've got plenty of yeah. time. Okay. Do I have to come back? No. And we'll you take have care to, of You have to come no. back and you have to speak again now. Well, if it's about your else. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you. truly. Thank you. Great job. Okay. And you, that's it, I guess. Now we're on to matters that require action. So pre-1... Um, Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take a motion to approve a serial bond resolution authorizing the is issuance of up to $180,932 aggregate principal amount serial bonds of the village of Dobbs Ferry. Do I have a motion? And we'll explain all that in a minute. Uh, Trustee Golio, second. Trustee Rosillo, discussion. Okay. So. Jeff, you want to just give us a few words of wisdom here? Um, so the motion relates to uh, some, a tax cert case that the board had approved um, paying a, a couple years ago. And what happened was the uh, case was paid out of the capital fund. Mm -hmm and the uh, funding for the case had not been provided. So what I'm asking to do is provide funding for that, okay. to pay that. Discussion, anyone? All in favor? And that passes unanimously, so thank you. We have a lot of uh, budget stuff here tonight. Next, can I get a motion to approve capital fund budget closeouts? Do I have a motion? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Rosillo, discussion. Any words of wisdom here, Jeff? <laughs> sure. Um, as you may recall, the uh, auditors in our last audit had recommended that we review uh, the capital fund. Uh, there's a number of projects that have been act inactive for a number of years, and they recommended that we consider them for closeout. Um, which, and, and I know the board knows this, but uh, you know, capital project, once you approve it and you provide uh, money, you know, debt yeah. financing, there's only specific things you can do with it. Okay. Either you do the project or you uh, pay the debt service with it. And that's what I'm asking to do. And this would just sort of clean up capital, get the capital. Okay. Yep. Okay. 
Any questions, discussions? All in favor? And that passes. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Again. No problem. One more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next is to consider a motion to approve account payable and receivable write offs. Do I have a motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee O'Donnell. Discussion. Let's see what Jeff has to say about <laughs> this one. It's okay. best he tells it because I don't want it's It's very financially uh, specific, and I want him to be as clear about it as sure. he can. Um, again, this is a response to our prior audit. Mm -hmm. um, the auditors had noted that there were some old balances on our balance sheet that we should review, and um, if we determine they're not you know, collectible or not uh, uh, good payables, we should come to the board and ask to write those off, and that's what I'm doing. Okay. Discussion on this? So just to be clear, you've gone through these and you've evaluated them? Correct. Okay. All in favor? And that passes unanimously. Next is to, uh, can I get a motion to amend the budget line item A.2770, miscellaneous review, and A. Point revenue. Revenue, I'm sorry. And A.770.410, parks maintenance contractual to pay for the intermunicipal agreement relating to the donation of the scoreboard for the Ghoul Park, for Ghoul Park in the amount of $4,650. And, um, Trustee Rizzillo, second. Trustee Golio. Explanation. Okay. Um, as you are aware, in a previous meeting, um, the village had entered into that intermunicipal agreement with the school district. Uh, this is essentially a pass through, it's a no cost. Mm -hmm. And all I'm asking is since it wasn't part of the original budget, to amend the budget so that we can do that. Discussion? All in favor? And that passes. Unanimously. Okay, can I get a motion to amend budget line items A.2680, issuance recoveries, and A.7, oh wait, we just did that. No, 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 no. okay. A point, oh, no, I was looking back up here. A.7100410, parks maintenance contractual, to pay for damage done to the Ghoul Park fence. Take it away, Jeff. No, my motion. Motion. No, motion, sorry. Trustee O'Donnell, second Trustee Rosillo. Um, okay, so this is uh, to repair the damage to the uh, fence. Uh, we received a check in the amount, an insurance check in the amount of uh, $5,714. Um, and in order to properly account for this and pay for this, again, it wasn't part of the budget, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm asking to amend the budget. And this is from the accident? From the accident. Okay. Anyone else? All in favor? And that passes unanimously. Thank you, Jeff. No problem. Next is to consider a motion to authorize a tax correction refund to Mr. J. Landauer for the property located at 78 Langdon Avenue in the amount of $1,120.18. Do I have a motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Golio, discussion. Do you, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. I was just trying to catch up with the papers here. Uh, so there, there was an error on Mr. Uh, Landauer's um, tax bill this year, <laughs> and in order to uh, refund that, we need the board authorization to do that. Okay. Anyone have any questions? No. All in favor? And that passes. Next is to consider a resolution awarding the 200, 200, 2015 resurfacing capital project as a consortium of the six villages in the town of Greenberg to the lowest bidder. Do I have a motion? Trustee you put the amount and who it is. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. For the amount of $213,775 and for $175,585.14. Um, 
that just breaks down to 213. It goes to ELQ Industries, the Correct. big board. Yep. And then the other two numbers are the breakdown. Now okay. It's Which, the and the next program and also from our capital funding. So it's all budgeted and or state money. Right. And the three, the $38,189.86 is capital funding. Right? Already for part of the budget. Right. Do I have a motion? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Golio, discussion. I just had a question on page one of the, I guess, of the resolution. It says the estimates for Dobbs Ferry, the value of the work is 473000 but yet we're approving 213. Yeah. Can you explain that a little? Yeah, there were, uh, Betsy, maybe I'll try, but I know there were some other roads we were considering, but the funding wasn't there. So we're just doing Judson Avenue, Judson I believe. Avenue, Judson okay. Avenue, uh, the entire length of Judson Avenue. Okay. There's not okay. enough money to do others. Okay. That'll be next time, I guess. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Discussions? All in favor? And that passes unanimously. Next, item seven is to consider a motion to authorize the interim village administrator to sign an agreement with Guardian to provide dental insurance for village employees at a savings of 16.3% or $7,249.68 per year. Do I have a motion? Trustee Golio, second. Trustee Rosillo, discussion. Betsy, Jeff, who wants to chime in here? Um, I can do it. Uh, Jeff and I met our, um, our dental insurance for our employees had expired uh, back in June, mm -hmm. June 1st. So we had been uh, month to month with insurance. Uh, we met with our insurance carrier. Uh, we found a, a better a better deal with Guardian. Um, it actually appears to be a better policy than we, we currently have, um, and it's 16.3 percent less. So it's it's a win win. Uh, we did um, speak with the Teamsters with with the trustees of the Teamsters, and they've agreed to to sign off on a stipulation. So we're prepared to do that tonight, and uh, this dental will take effect uh, September 1st. Love savings. Yeah. Anyone else? Any discussion? All in favor? And thank you, Betsy and Jeff. That passes. Uh, so we now have. <laughs> I'm sorry. Take a little break. <laughs> I was going to say. Boy, this job is tough. Sorry. You should have a little more respect for the mayor. It's a lot of words. Can Number eight. eight. Thank you. <laughs> Consider a motion to authorize the mayor to sign a stipulation of agreement between Local 456 IBT and the Village of Dobbs Ferry regarding the contractual agreement in Article 7, Dental Insurance, and effective September 1st. It's I'm sorry. Article 12. 12, 2015. Do I have a motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Golio, discussion? We're okay? Mm -hmm. All in favor? And that passes. Uh, consider a motion to increase the hourly rate of in intermediate clerks from $25.50 per hour to $27 per hour retroactive to June 1st, 2015, as recommended by Police Chief Betsy Gilardi. Do I have a motion? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Golio, discussion. Plus. Yeah, these are uh, two part-time intermediate clerks that work for me downstairs. Um, they've received a 50 cent increase in the past eight years. They're asking for an increase. Um, I truly believe they deserve it, and um, I'm here to ask you for this increase for them. Is it me? Or does $25.50 plus 50 cents give you 26? No, they only received no. the 50 cent increase over the last eight years. Oh, it's so not, you're not asking not for a 50, one. you're asking for a dollar fifty. No. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Do I have a motion? We did that? Yes. <laughs> Do we have a discussion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all in favor? There you go. And that passes. Oh, you're all going to have your turn in life. <laughs> 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 Item 10. Consider a motion. Only halfway through it looks like that way. <laughs> well, I'd do a little bit better if we could turn it the AC up. Thank you. It is hot. I'm really glad I went what summer. 
Thanks, Frank. No, he's leaving. He's leaving. <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> oh, God. Item number 10. Thank you. Consider a motion to increase the hour, hourly rate of police chief police attendance from $20 per hour to $21.50 per hour, retroactive to June 1st, 2015, as recommended by Police Chief Betsy Gillari. Do I have a motion? Trustee Golio, second. Trustee O'Donnell, discussion. Okay, this is again, this is just to to be consistent um, there are three police dispatchers they're all making different different amounts so this is to get everybody up to 2150 an hour across the board and we could afford this we can afford this okay. Jeff can we afford this okay yeah, yeah all in favor and that passes unanimously next is consider a motion to increase the rat hour we're increasing a lot of people this is all just to bring everybody yeah, right in line, yeah. Thank you. Uh, consider a motion to increase the, do I have a motion to increase the hourly rate of, of each senior citizen bus driver from $15 per hour to $19 per hour, retroactive June 1st, 2015, as recommended by Police Chief Betsy Gilardi. Do I have a motion? Trustee Golio, second. Trustee Rosillo. Betsy? Okay. Um, Going back uh, to the meeting, I believe it was in June, um, the, the bus drivers that work for the Village of Dosbury were making $15 an hour. The bus drivers that were actually employed by the Village of Ardsley, the senior citizen bus drivers, were making $19 an hour. Ardsley no longer wanted to be part of our senior citizen program, so now we are employing the, the two bus drivers. And it's just to keep So they rate. had been making 19 right. an hour. They were making 15 hour, uh, they were making 15 here. We changed one of the bus drivers in June. We neglected to change the other one. So this is just to bring them both to $19 an hour. Everybody okay with that? All in favor? And that passes. Thank you. Consider a motion to acknowledge receipt of a letter from Dobbs Ferry Volunteer Fire Department Secretary Edward Nick removing Mr. Dennis Roth from the roles of the Dobbs Ferry Fire Volunteer, uh, sorry, Dobbs Ferry Volunteer Fire Department, effective April 20th, 2015, and to remove Mr. Dennis Roth from the roles of the Dobbs Ferry Vo Volunteer Fire Department, effective April 20th, 2015. Do I have a motion? Trustee Golio, second. Trustee Rosillo. Um, any discussion? All in favor? And that passes. Thank you. Item number 13, consider a motion to confirm the resignation of and remove and remove Mr. Samuel Goldman from the roles of the Dobbs Ferry Fire Depart Volunteer Fire Department, effective July 15, 2015. Do I have a motion? Uh, Trustee Golio, second. Trustee Rosillo, discussion? All in favor? And that passes, thank you. Consider a motion to accept the resignation of Police Officer Michael J. Huffman, effective August 2nd, 2015, at 23.59 hours. Do I have a motion? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Vasillo, discussion? And that passes. Oh, all in favor? <laughs> and that passes. Item number 15. Consider a motion authorizing the police chief to sign an intermunicipal agreement with the Westchester County District's Office, Attorney's Office, to participate in a pilot program to equip the police department's officers with body cameras. Do I have a motion? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Rosillo, discussion. Let's discuss. Yes. Sure. Um, the police department's been chosen by the Westchester County District Attorney's Office to participate in a pilot program, a one-year pilot program, to equip our officers with body cameras. Mm -hmm. um, so Dobbs Ferry, along with Tuckahoe, Peekskill, Mount Vernon, and Greenberg were the departments in the county that were selected to participate in this program <coughs> at no cost to the village. Wow. All the police officers will have? Yes. Okay. Can't beat the price. 
And this is for one year? Well, it's a one year pilot program, but the equipment is ours to do what we want with after the one year. Wow. And will this be evaluated by? By the district attorney's office. And do you have any input in this, in the, in the pro, in evaluating All it? of the chiefs that have been selected to participate will be involved. Okay. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This will be on channel 46. I hope not. <laughs> Live streaming <laughs> of every camera, great. <coughs> okay, discussion? All in favor? Thank you, and it's nice to get. Item number 16, consider a motion to authorize the interim village administrator to sign an intergovernmental agreement with the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation to use a state-owned motorized boat for marine law enforcement purposes. Do I have a motion? Trustee Golio, second. Trustee O'Donnell, discussion. Um, again, the police department, um, in conjunction with the Irvington Police Department, the Hastings Police Department, uh, have begun a, a shared services uh, marine unit. Uh, we received a 24-foot a uh, justice um, dual engine vessel from New York State um, at no cost to any of the villages um, to, to use as we see fit. It's been outfitted, and hopefully we'll have it out on the river and, and we share group. manning it we'll share manning it we'll share all, all expenses but but the boat itself um, $130,000 vessel um, was provided to us free of charge and where is the boat going to be docked you know the boat is docked at Tower Ridge Yacht Club in Hastings and, and also just one other thing with all the new activities potentially um, coming up down there while kayaking has been a big deal I think We'll see a lot more people down there, uh, just people by the shoreline, the boats coming into the boat dock, people on the fishing pier. It's probably not a bad thing that we have something as close as this, um, you know, just for the safety of the residents. So. Yes, thank you, Vic. Good point. Good point. All in favor? And that passes unanimously. Item number 17. Consider a motion to, do I have a motion to authorize the sale of surplus police department and building department equipment? Trustee Rosillo, second, Trustee O'Donnell. Discussion? Uh, this would be, um, re we're requesting authorization to uh, sell a 2008 Ford Crown Victoria police yeah. car, as well as um, two plotters scanners antiquated from the building department and we've had we've had a lot of luck um, auctioning surplus equipment and uh, just additional revenue okay all in favor and that passes unanimously Can do I have a motion to authorize the interim village administrator to sign the snow and ice agreement extension for the 2014-2015 snow season? Are we really talking snow today? <laughs> well, we're also talking 2014-2015. So <laughs> this is additional funding because we had a bad winter. Right. So it's additional revenue in. Well, let me get a motion first. Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Golio, discussion. So this is back 2014-2015. They're, okay. they're providing us with additional funds because we, we spent more than they had allotted. And, and one thing I can say through the years from at least my memory, um, we've done a great job in managing, you know, what we've had to work with and very cost efficiently. And, you know, last year, as everybody knows, kind of threw everybody for a loop. So totally see why this is happening but I, I do have to say as somebody who does a lot of driving between here and Tarrytown Dobbs Ferry is so much better at snow and ice than our northern neighbors it's pretty amazing we are lucky yes Good. so I guess we're all in favor here yeah. I'm going out on a limb because <laughs> we're getting money it doesn't cost we're, anything, right? we're getting money doesn't cost anything yeah let's go for it okay all in favor that passes unanimously. Okay. 
Next is, everybody left, they were so concerned here. I consider a motion to refer the site plan approval for the application of 75 Main Street to the planning board. Do I have a motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Golio, discussion. I believe this is just part of our process yeah. here, and we're not discussing this actually tonight. We're just. We have received an application from uh, 75 Main Street for development under our code. The Board of Trustees has site plan approval in the downtown zone, which is this is the DB zone. Uh, in those uh, scenarios, the thought process was have the application come here first, so you're not surprised about it in a year from now. Uh, you will refer to the planning board. The planning board will do its job, then it eventually will come back here. So this is a ministerial referral for you and for the public to understand that this application is out there. Well, just like they were asking tonight. Right, they're asking tonight, right. I mean, there, there, there is a public hearing scheduled for uh, September. Uh, that'll be in the newspaper, and there'll be signs at the property, so everyone should look out for that. But you will have to refer to the planning board in any event. So that's all you're doing tonight is referring it, and it'll be back here. You know, sometime. sometime in the future. Okay, so we have a motion. Um, all in favor? And that passes unanimously. Okay, the next thing is to get a motion to schedule a public hearing on September 8th, which I believe is our next meeting. Yes. 2008, I'm sorry, 2015 at 7.30 p.m. to adopt a local law on revising the procurement policy to include the piggyback law. Do I have a motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee O'Donnell, discussion. Uh, yes, uh, this is a law under New York State that allows municipalities to, uh, when one municipality bids on something, for instance, Yonkers, let's take an example for some project, lighting. Um, we just did it for Nurse Shell. They, they have a lighting contract with a, and a certain price from a contractor. We as another municipality, if we pass this law, can piggyback on that pricing so we get that pricing, don't need to do additional specs, don't need to do additional bidding, additional costs to the village. So this is, in the long run will save us money, but we do need to approve the law. And we don't think it's ever been passed before. So just to cover ourselves, we feel that you guys should pass this law. So we'll draft some legislation for the next meeting, publish it so you guys can consider it at your next meeting. Okay. And this is what we initially did with the LEDs. When we got the great price, it went out. Correct. Uh, and others piggybacked on us now that New Rochelle has gotten a better price. Now people are piggybacking on them. Correct. That'll happen on other. It could be for anything. It could be for road sir. It could be anything in the future. It's, yeah. If we get a good price, we'll Great we'll way to on. save money. And time. Mm hmm Efficiency, huh? Who would have thought it? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? And that passes unanimously. Item 21. Uh, can I have a motion to authorize the village clerk to attend the 2015 NICOM Fall Training School from September 28, 2015 to October 1, 2015? Do I have a motion? Trustee Golio, second. Trustee O'Donnell. Discussion. Go for it. It, it, this is a uh, NICOM is a New York Conference of Mayors. Mm -hmm. We are a member of the New York Conference of Mayors. It's a great conference. I believe Liz will be there with many different um, uh, presentations on different topics affecting municipalities. We do have a uh, tentative agenda here and a fall training right. school. This is mm -hmm. well attended and something that will be very good for uh, anyone to attend, really. Yeah, um, if you don't mind, I just wanted to add. Um, the training actually is very valuable, um, and it's something that I have included in my budget for the past um, probably 12 years, but um, I have not attended the school for the past two years. So um, at this point, it's um, kind of important for me to be there just to get updates on uh, any changes in current laws that may or may not affect the village. Um, and ordinarily what I do when I do return from the training, I do write a, a memorandum to the mayor and the board um, to inform you of what classes I took and uh, a brief overview of what was discussed and any updates um, that may be beneficial to the village. Okay? So I thank you. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. All in favor? And that passes unanimously. Item 22. 
Consider a motion to close Village Hall on August 17th and August 18th for records management. Do I have a motion? Trustee O'Donnell, second Trustee Rosillo. Discussion. This is a great day, I hear, right? It's going to be a day. This is a great day. Um, this has actually been approved previously uh, for two days. Unfortunately, the second day happened to be the first day of tax collection day, and um, the employees were not able to, to do what they had to do because they were collecting taxes. So we're asking for another two days, and we're going to um, basically do a big clean mm -hmm. and um, get rid of things that we don't need and file things that we need uh, to keep and get filed away. Great. Do oh. now, I want to actually add something in terms oh, of discussion. Something. I'm assuming that, that any papers that are going to be thrown out, for lack of a better term, will be recycled. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Some of them are shredded, but... Like, yeah, they're right. shredded yeah. and then, and then recycled. recycled. Right. Okay, all in favor? And that passes. Thank you. Item 23, consider a motion to approve a request from the Jobs Ferry Parent Teacher Associ Association to post signs and banners for the 2015 Pumpkin Fair from October 1st, 2015 to October 24th, 2015. Do I have a motion? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Rosillo. Okay, we can't talk about snow or pumpkins. It's August. I know. <laughs> this is like all in favor? And that passes. Oh, this time goes so fast. Okay, so that's it for us. Now we're moving on to uh, correspondence and claims. Um, I don't think I have anything. Yeah, oh, I do. Okay. Yeah, I just have to acknowledge a receipt of a letter from Dobbs Ferry Fire Volunteer Fire Department Chief Jerry um, McElvain to Interim Village Administrator Betsy Gilardi regarding being accepted for the National Fire Academy course, National Traffic Management Training, train the trainer course that he attended on the weekend of July 31st, 2015 at no cost to the village. We thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah. Did you see that? That was it. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? <laughs> you had a good time? Yeah. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. We appreciate it. My copy, for some reason, I had, can I see that? What, the letter? Yeah, because. Very nice. Thank you, seriously. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, anyone have anything else for that minutes. section? Minutes. Next. I know it's the minutes next. My God. Just let it breathe a little bit. How am I doing? I don't know. How are you doing? I'm just fine. You're doing okay. great. Uh, anybody have anything for the minutes? Any changes, revisions, thoughts? No, I like that. I, no. I actually have a correction. <laughs> Liz! Correct in one minute. On page one, <laughs> sentence two. The last name of Trustee Cassell has one L. It should have two L's. Oh. Wow. Well. <laughs> Good cat. Great. Good thing you're taking that course soon. <laughs> um, do I have a motion to accept the minutes from uh, July 14th, 2015? Trustee O'Donnell, second. Trustee Rosillo, all in favor? And those are the minutes. Reports, anyone? Yeah. I just uh, want to commend uh, all the people involved with the uh, event on Sunday in terms of the road oh, to freedom yes, thank you. and everything and to thank all the volunteers and all the yeah. people who baked and uh, to someone who I think is somewhat known to the mayor for uh, his participation. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, so 
a good time. Uh, and I great believe weather. was had by all and tremendous weather. So yeah. very nice. Uh, and beyond that, nothing else new. Nothing. Uh, no, we don't. We talked about that. Uh, let's see. What happened to yours? I don't know. Okay. This is uh, from the Ardsley Country Club. Uh, it's a letter uh, from the president. Dear Mayor and Trustees, yesterday Matt to Tremble Ardsley Country Club's head of grounds and greens informed me that the teenagers who had vandalized several golf, golf holes at the club have been caught and that restitution was being made. And it was, goes on to actually thank uh, the hard work of police officer Justin Campy. He worked to gather clues, left at the scene, and on and on. And he just wants to thank uh, Officer Campy for his efforts, his diligence in identifying the parties involved. And he writes, Dobbs Ferry is fortunate to have such a fine officer on its staff and even luckier to have one that is homegrown. So that's a nice letter. Thank you. Sorry. And I have a few announcements. 9-11 um, Remembrance Ceremony at the Waterfront on Friday, September 11th, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. We really want to encourage more people to come. It is truly, no matter how many years it's been since that has happened, it's just such a, a wonderful is not the right word, but it, it's such a meaningful event. And um, I really would hope a lot of the children come, the younger kids who may or may not really remember this, but it's a, it's a beautiful ceremony and the participation uh, by the volunteers is, is always great. But we did feel last year that we could have used some more residents. Wasn't that the feeling mm -hmm. we had? Mm -hmm. we were so off last year. Half moon parking, half moon parking lot. lot. Yeah, was, maybe that was it. And now that we're back at the waterfront, maybe, okay. maybe we'll have better. Okay, so anyway, that would be uh, this year, September 11th is on a Friday, and that's at 6 30. Um, also, the American Legion flea market date has been changed from September 27th, 2015 to October 4th, 2015. So we were asked to mention that. And I think that is the end of our business. So I'd like to thank everyone. And meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>